Hey guys, today we're catching and cooking armadillo. Join me. I tell you when I missed that armadillo is uh, I got a little bit of adrenaline, so it's fun. I like hunting and chasing things. So this is all armadillo sign of them looking for insects and nuzzling in the ground here. You can see all fresh a couple days ago. They'll dig in there and looking for insects. So that's a good place to look for them. You can see how fresh over turn that is. So this would be a good place to look. It's all armadillo in the area looking for, I guess, whatever the armadillos eat. <laughs> Insects. Insects, bugs. Now you know it, where uh, armadillos have been in a cattle ranch. Right. Whenever the cow patties have been flipped over, they let them dry out a little bit. They'll flip them over and take all the pill bugs and insects out from underneath the cow patty. And so as you go across the field, you know exactly which areas armadillos are in because they'll go and just flip those systematically. Got myself with the catch pole. We got Bob's wife without the catch pole. Hey, did you find a shed? I found a kind of a pathetic shed. It's a little tiny one, but it's been broken off, eaten on. That's a trophy. It's an old That's one. a jackalope shed. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what that is. I, I am just mistaken. See, I usually just see the does hopping around out here, but that's a good looking jackalope. I'm nice. mistaken. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a trophy jackalope. Oh yeah, put that up. That'll, that'll hold a candlestick and a half. <laughs> you can't take armadillo hunting seriously, man. Armadillo. <laughs> no disrespect to the armadillo. I already missed one. <laughs> but truth be known, it was my first shot at catching one. So as it goes, there's a learning curve. So the idea is to get within two feet ish net grabbing distance and not do any lunging behavior like I did first track first try so if we get up on one next time I'm gonna use my stocking feet as I did the first time but I'm gonna times that by 10 to shrink the last little gap so we are out at dusk or near dusk Looking around the edges of the fields here. Hoping we spot another one. Apparently they're everywhere. We didn't spend too long finding the first one. So the idea guys is we're gonna catch this armadillo and eat it. Not too many people have eaten armadillo on account of the leprosy. I do not plan on getting leprosy. So we're gonna have some precautions involved I'm sure. Or Bob's just gonna throw caution to the wind and get leprosy for us all. <laughs> Bob's been pretty keen on eating one. He doesn't know too many other people who have. And I gotta be honest, I haven't had one either. Give it an hour once it's completely dark. Run roads, check out lights from neighbors. 
and look for armadillos because uh, everybody out here, the armadillos get out of control pretty fast and they'll tear up everything real quick. So as a kid, I'd actually call up and ask me to come and take care of the armadillo problems. Um, just one of those things, you know, you go to the big city, you got rats, we get armadillos. <laughs> Guys, catching armadillo in Texas is like a sport. We were driving around after fishing. So we heard a gunshot go off. Bob says, that's a warning shot. We gotta get out of here. It was nice of them to offer a warning shot. Of course, I got my ears up. So we got out, we uh, drove around, and we noticed some people in the field or in the front yard, I should say. They had the flashlights on, gun in hand, and Sean asked, what y'all got there? <laughs> in a Texas accent. And uh, the people write, we got ourselves an armadillo. <laughs> I gotta laugh. I find it humorous. Uh, it's such a cultural thing, right? It just You come here and you gotta blend in. So here I am with my net, looking for an armadillo. We want to do a catch and cook with it. So we did find, oh, here it is. Here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. We found a burrow. There's an armadillo hole right here. We know it's an active armadillo hole because we saw the armadillo from that burrow. So what I'm gonna do is, they only work around the area about 30 yards or so in a circle. I'm gonna wait on top of the burrow for the armadillo to come out and then I'm gonna be able to have an easier chance catching it by blocking off the tunnel because once it's startled, if it's close to the burrow, what it's gonna to want to do is just go directly back into the burrow. But if I sit on top of the burrow, I can easily just dart out and grab it. So let's post up. It's right about the time when armadillos start come out. The sun is just hitting the top of the trees. That's prime time armadillo hunting. But they're active all night, but obviously more difficult to hunt. And Bob told me in the mornings, that armadillo aren't super active. So I think we're at prime time right now. Let's go see if this guy comes out. Well, it was a good plan. Just spooked up some deer over there. All I had to do was let the armadillo come out, put the net in front, and then when the armadillo tried to come back in, it would go into the net. Maybe he's not here anymore. We got the big guns in. We got Wes S. with the gun now, looking for armadillo. We need to get an armadillo, and I've been working hard. It's just not happening, so Wes drove six and a half hours just to get me an armadillo. <laughs> He's on the job. He's on the job. He can't buy an armadillo. I was out last night, I didn't see any. Wes was out last night, driving around for four hours on his way here. I said, if you find an armadillo, just pick it up. He saw one that was laying flat on its back with its arms in the air. <laughs> he passed it up. I don't blame him. I probably wouldn't have eaten that one. Man, we cannot buy an armadillo. It was, it was sub-level of fresh. <laughs> Did it bit you? No, they, they haul these to oh, their hole. Stinging. They're stickers. Oh. They eat them. They eat those. <laughs> those things hurt. Yeah, they do. So much for that. Yeah, those That's something the third graders can keep doing. I'm those right. things, those stickers are painful. You know, something keeps biting you. It's probably a stick. It's one of those stickers. Yep. So you got to take it off. That is where he's coming from. <laughs> Stick the gun in there. And... No, it's probably not in there anymore. But you know, the best of my luck, he'd be sharing it with a rattlesnake. That is a badger den. The difference is it goes back and it sheds dirt off. It's not a, a shallow thing. That hole's probably at least seven or eight feet deep. And it may not be a den. Could be a gopher hole, 
but that's the one thing that can outdig a gopher. That's a bad joke. All right, guys, we got the beast right here. Now, a lot of people are kind of scared about handling them. Uh, armadillo, I don't blame them. They um, can carry leprosy, although very rare. I think it's only one or two percent of the population. The nine banded, and I haven't counted the bands on this guy, are the only ones that I know that carry, that can potentially carry leprosy. 95% are completely immune from the disease. Uh, as far as I know, leprosy is curable. Uh, it's bacterial in nature, so it can be cooked and uh, purified uh, for cooking. You know, through the cooking process, you can end up with an armadillo that's edible. So that's what we plan to do. Um, there are some ideas about cooking in the shell, but I'm not schooled on that. So I think maybe a pot roast. So I'm going to go meet back up with the rest of the crew. We've got a few guys bumming around here. Bob Hanser, I think, is back at camp. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's turn this guy into a meal. I just wanted to ding, take, take him out here this morning, show you what he looks like, and uh, just enjoy, you know, being out here in South Texas and exploring what what all it has to offer. It's still good firewood. You throw my firewood away for what? I'm putting it to the side. Oh, <laughs> that, this we would need a saw for. <laughs> What? Let me see if it'll break. Probably not. I'll probably knock the tree down on it. Oh, look at there. Eat my Wheaties. Never mind. We can use this. This mesquite must have grown close to Austin. <laughs> you got an interesting fire technique. So we had all the fire. I had a fire there. Now the fire's over here. Now, now what do we do, Wes? Well. He's building it like he was in Canada. He's in Canada. He had enough fire to burn all night, or wood piled up to burn all night long. And he was like, I think he was just gonna like pour gas on it or something. I don't know. So we're gonna like break it into little pieces, small, put a small fire, and then put some wood on it, appropriate to what we're trying to accomplish. Would that be okay? I, I can agree with that. Okay. I just just go big. Yeah, go big, then we could go home, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we're cooking an armadillo here. We don't get uh, two, three foot of snow every other day here. It's been a little, it's been a couple weeks since it rained, so we'll like try to keep her keep the we'll try to keep the flames down to about here. If that's okay, about three foot. Off okay, the I was doing it wrong the whole time I was here. <laughs> it was way too hot. <clears throat> All right, so the idea that Wes is getting at eventually <laughs> is we're gonna make a small fire, not a big fire. All my fire, all my fires have been pretty big here because I just, it's the woods everywhere. I just, as as they say, chunk it, chunk it on is like chuck it. We would say chuck it on. They say chunk it on, which means throw. So they would chunk it on. I would chunk it on and have a way too big a flame fire, and uh, could never get close to it. So I guess the idea is to go small here, which is weird for Texas. Actually, no, because in <laughs> Texas we have hardwoods and stuff. So when you light the fire, a little bit of wood makes a lot of heat. Mesquite. You don't know that's mesquite? Mesquite. It, it looks like mesquite hardwood, but where's the rest of the mesquite? It's mesquite. Mesquite. Oh, mesquite. Where's the yellow? Mesquite. Yellow, it's red. Red, red mesquite. Well, the center of mesquite is red. Yeah. yeah. This mountain, this may have been laying here for 2,000 years. It may have been dinosaurs peeing on that. I don't feel like taking fire all over the county, so I'll do this right here. Oh, no, that's better. That, that's better. If you don't watch Wes on his channel, both basically he uh, does like long-winded chats. I, I actually would never know that he had any skills. <laughs> <laughs> hey, chatting is a skill. <laughs> it is a skill. You're right. But Wes is actually put the work. <laughs> what are you doing now? I'm making little pieces of dirt. Curious. Don't don't look. Don't look. Nobody look. This is bad. Don't do this. So what are you doing now? I'm making little pieces of dirt. I have no idea. Apparently you don't have to do this in Canada. I don't know. The wind doesn't blow up there or what? I 
I, I have no idea what's going on. You can dig a pit now? Not a pit. Just a hole? Just a little impression. I'm just going to go with this. You just, yeah, just go with it. Just I'm just going to assume I might learn something from Wes. Well, he wants to cook something on this. Yeah. I want to cook an armadillo on this. So we got to have a place to store some heat and then put something and put some more heat on top of it. So something, we need a little dent. A little dent. Okay, so some things I learned from Wes already. Um, the guns that go pew, 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 pew and shoot lots of bullets <laughs> don't always result in a, in a successful harvest. Not always. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a lot of little piglets. It was, it was like it was like trying to shoot a herd of Easter bunnies. <laughs> it was so well. That sounds about right. All right guys, so here we are, at the moment of truth. We uh, gave him a quick bath, real quick. And uh, in the mayhem of living off the land in Texas, I actually lost my Grumman knife. It's somewhere re-inherited by the landscape. So Wes is going to expose himself to leprosy in... <laughs> I ain't scared. In uh, effort to learn more about the science of eating an armadillo. So, Bob gave us some instruction. He's off pursuit of a hog as we speak. So we're going to cut the outside, both sides, all the way to the front. And the way Bob explained it, it was at the back here, there is a, an attachment point uh, up against the backbone. So we basically, it's a little piece of cartilage. We gotta scoop that out and then the whole animal should basically separate. Um, if you guys want to watch us kind of fiddle around with this process, you'll have to skip over to my unlisted channel and follow along there. I will tell you that it's probably going to be fairly graphic and it's not going to be for people who are skoomish. I'm eating them, but I ain't never, I just showed up with a plate. <laughs> this time I had to show up with a knife, so I'm I've, ready. I've never had armadillo before, so this is going to be my first time. Tastes nothing like chicken. All right, I'll see you guys on the other side. One chunk, two chunks. My Courtney gloves are officially becoming retired. <laughs> so if you, you guys don't understand this running joke, you gotta go back and look, Courtney only. It's a long history on the channel, so. Uh, I think it's fitting to let them go like this on an armadillo, probably the most dangerous beast we've cleaned so far. Potentially carrying all sorts of dangerous parasites. And the parasites will instantly become null and void. So um, Wes plucked this out of his bag and he said, you gotta use this. So it says on here, Rob's rattlesnake Rub. Somebody obviously spent a long time making that label. Uh, illustrated by Happy Hair. Happy Hair, yeah. Happy Hair. So is there a story behind this? Yeah, uh, the guy, this guy's a brother from another mother. We hang out together. We actually met on my channel, or on BA channel. And uh, If you don't know Wes, he's a, he's a prepper. I'm a, I'm a prepper slash homesteader slash guy that talks too much on YouTube. Anyway, he... Uh, he sent me this because I nearly stepped on a rattlesnake while doing a live video. And I said, I'm killing it cook and cooking it and eating it. So he sent me something to season it with. So I used it and it is really good stuff. The recipe for this cornbread was given to me by a 68 year old man of color who 
was every bit the American. But he saw me and saw that I was down on my luck and asked me, what's wrong with you, white boy? So I told him, I said, I'm, I'm, I can't come up with anything to eat. And I was a young guy at the time. I was, I hadn't reached legal to be out of my own age yet. But he told me, he said, go get you some cornmeal and some lard and then go to them convenience restaurants. And they got them condiments out there. Just get you some salt and some pepper and whatever else you can get away with and bring it back and I'll show you what to do. And he took his little pan and we built a little fire. He boiled some water, mixed everything together and I ate cornbread until I was sick and I've been eating that stuff ever since. It's cheap, it's easy, and it's good. And I wish I'd ask the man his name. But anyway, that's how you make a American staple. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. Y'all still out, don't die. This is that cornbread, it's just about done. It just lacks a little dash of flavor. Real culture. I'm, I'm serious, I'm having a hard time not just picking out and <laughs> eating every bit of that. Y'all give this guy a thumbs up, but he is, I've <laughs> been here, I've followed this guy since he was 800 subs. Okay, I'm, I'm claiming it. I'm one of the original Dude, that's, lovers of the channel. If you're below a thousand, <laughs> that's like. Now I got to see what he actually put. Y'all, we don't deserve this <laughs> video, but y'all give him a thumbs up. It's a lot of work, right? It's, it's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, I put the hours in. We put the hours in. Running around, running gun, all over the place. Hours and hours, late nights, early mornings. And and I'm, I'm happy Wes came to uh, lend a hand near the end and give me that final push because uh, I don't know if this would have happened otherwise. Go back to the start of the playlist. Watch the whole thing. It's uh, I learned a lot. Yeah, I think you guys will too. And uh, thanks for sharing Texas with me. You're welcome. Thanks for getting me. This is a new part of Texas to me. I like it, but... Man, you can't see your neighbor for the trees around here. That's just the way it is. Yeah, and anytime you want to come to Canada, let me know. I, I will. I'll show you around. I just might do it, but it's going to be like sometime when there's no mosquitoes and no snow. That really does smell good. You surprised it smells good? Yeah, actually. <laughs> you're not sure. You're never sure. You're never sure. I mean, it's an armored plated, armor plated rat. So we've had this on for hours. Hours. We lost track probably four? Four hours? I think it's closer to five. Four or five? Oh, so it should be done. It should be done. All right, so armadillo for me is one of the ones that makes me wonder about my life choices. Gonna eat armadillo, which potentially carries leprosy. My mouth is not watering. <laughs> I've eaten it before, I know it's good. It's yeah, good. yeah? It's good, I tell, I'm telling you, it, it's gonna taste good. You got your bushcraft spoon? Go ahead, dig in. My little bushcraft spoon. I'm gonna grab a piece of dark meat. <laughs> That's what the meat looks like, meat looks like meat. It always looks like meat. Should we season it again or do you think it's good enough? No. Okay. It's like seriously hot though. So, you got a spoon? I'm working. Spoonful. I'm working. 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 Okay. Yep. Ready? Two, wait, wait. Cheers. Cheers. To leprosy. To leprosy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to not getting leprosy. Um. Could you use garlic. Tastes like. A okay. cross between coon and turkey. Yeah? Much, yeah. Would you say that? Yeah. It's not gamey. It's not gamey at all. There's no gaminess. It, it, I think it's weird though. It's got like a, it tastes more like fowl than. Yeah. It's got a bird texture. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely got bird. It's bird. It's bird. It's bird. It's uh, not chicken. It's turkey. Turkey. 
ish, dovish. Dove? Dove? dove I've never Pig. had turkey. Pigeon. Or dove. Tastes pi pigeon. You know what? A bit. Pigeon? Pigeon. Tastes mm. like armadillo. 100% armadillo. 100% armadillo. I think I need some more spices on there. You do. Because this goes a long way. Like you can you can down a lot of armadillo in this form. Mm -hmm. If you find a shelf a tuber, mm -hmm. carrot. And on the prepper end of it, you got this guy. You can just eat him. Or you can open the bucket and get the bag of rice out. Yeah. And you just fed everybody for two days. Bag of rice, potatoes, carrots, celery. But if you cook well or properly, then you're not going to be exposed to the bacteria. We're, we're pretty clear that that uh, that uh, the disease leprosy. leprosy. I've already got it. It's already eating away at my tissues, so I can't think straight anymore. <laughs> you're gonna blame that on the <laughs> leprosy? <Yeah. laughs> okay. I'm gonna br blame that on trying to track one of these guys down for four days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll give you that one. So it, we're pretty clear it's a bacteria, and a bacteria is gonna die as soon as it reaches the boy point so I mean there shouldn't be any leprosy left in here. All right guys so if you're not aware I've been in South Texas for two weeks now and I'm just wrapping up a few other things so there's a lot more to come. If you want to support the channel there's a couple ways there's actually three ways. The free way the first way is just watch the video the entire video from the start to the end. If you watch the whole video and you like it um, YouTube says, okay, let's promote this video, and then it gets out there into the wider world. If you watch two minutes of it and you t click X, it says it's a crappy video and it doesn't promote it. That's the free way. Hit the like, multiple comments, share with your friends. If everybody shared the video, all the problems would go away. The second way is you can buy a t-shirt, but be warned, when you buy a t-shirt, 50% of the profits will go to the t-shirt company, the other 50% will come to me, and then there's going to be a nominal fee on top of that for shipping, which goes to the postal company. I I implore you to, to buy a t-shirt if you want to visibly display your support for the channel and have something in return for supporting the channel. The third way is to donate directly. 100% of that money comes directly to me and then I can use that to support future uh, projects. One of the which is going to be season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge where we're going 22 hours north of my house in southern Ontario to Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. We're going to fly into Back Lakes and we're gonna be doing a whole lot of fishing. So we're probably gonna be using some staple items to make up the caloric deficit what we can't make up from hunting. So I think that will be a little bit of an eye-opening exercise. So if you guys are enjoying this, as always, you can subscribe or not. I don't care.